everyone. We are so excited to be part of Lead Dev London this year and have this opportunity to share with you our story and experiences. My name is Jackie, and this is my colleague and friend Marlena, and we're both software engineering managers at Bloomberg. We both started at Bloomberg as individual contributors, or IC, and over the past year and a half, we both made the transition to becoming engineering managers. While we both faced many similar challenges and pitfalls as new engineering managers, we also had different pathways to leadership, and that has uniquely shaped how we approached each of these challenges. For me, apologies, thank you. For me, my pathway to management began from the team that I had been on for the past four and a half years. I have had to learn how to navigate redefining relationships with friends and peers who I now had to manage and learn to rely on my team more and allow myself to feel more comfortable with being more removed from the nitty-gritty details of software implementation. I've had to constantly remind myself that what got me here won't get me there, I mean the skills I had gotten good at as a software engineer, the skills I was most comfortable doing were not the skills that I would need to grow in practice to become a better manager. Meanwhile, my career path looks slightly different. I spent years in a team in a completely different area than where I am today, and I got to a point where I was looking for leadership opportunities. I leveraged my network and our company's internal mobility resources, and I found a team that was right for me. But this meant moving to a completely new area with a new tech stack, new business domain, and new people. I had to start from scratch to rebuild my network and get to know my new team. So we've gotten a lot of great advice over the past year as we transitioned into leadership, but it's not always so easy to act on that advice. So today we wanted to go through four key responsibilities that I'm sure all managers have heard of and the pitfalls that we fell into trying to execute on that advice. And of course, the lessons we learned along the way. So the four responsibilities we're gonna go through today are building relationships, delegating, managing up, and giving feedback. So to dive into our first topic, one of the first things you'll always hear as a manager is how important it is to build relationships. And this was something that I was especially worried about coming into a new area. I'd spent four years building my network and my relationships in my old team, but I didn't have the luxury of spending another couple of years doing the same in my new area. So I thought I had to come in strong and show everybody that I knew what I was talking about. I was really preoccupied with proving to them that I was capable of doing this job and that led to many stressful days trying to learn as much as I could, as fast as I could. I quickly realized that this is an impossible endeavor, and it was also kind of missing the point. My team didn't care that I knew everything. They cared that I cared about them. And thus came the realization that it's not just about building relationships, it's about building trust. And I learned that it's okay to say, I don't know, and to ask questions. My team and I learn and grow together, and we trust that we're all there to support one another. For me, it wasn't just about building relationships, but it was also about redefining relationships with teammates and peers who are now my direct report. I already had strong relationships having had worked with these folks for the past four and a half years and having gotten to know them as individuals, but I wanted to establish my leadership brand so that my authority could be respected when it came down to making decisions, having to give feedback, having to have difficult conversations. I thought that I need to enforce this imaginary boundary to maintain that professionalism. But similar to Marlena, I realized that it's trust that defines these relationships. You know, some of people joke that when you become a new manager, that you no longer eat lunch with your team or go to happy hour anymore. But I found it's really important to do these things because these actions built my team's trust in me. I had to overcome my own mental boundary and realize that and trust that my team will know what my true intentions were if I had to make tough calls in this new role and that they would know that I hear them when it matters, but I am still able to push things forward when it needs to go on. So, this brings us to our next responsibility, that as new managers, every single leadership training will drill into our brains, and that's delegation is crucial. And yes, delegation is crucial, but delegation is also a skill that takes time and practice, and it's gonna look different across different team members and different tasks. When I was an individual contributor, I had gotten comfortable and confident in design conversations because I was well-versed in the code. If a new feature request came in or a bug came in, I typically knew which line of code to change because I probably wrote it. Early on as a manager, 
I, was, I found that I was still kind of digging through code and writing pull requests because I was familiar with the code. And I thought that I was actually wasting my teammates' time if I knew off the bat what the change was or where I need to make that code change. However, not only was I spreading myself way too thin and burning myself out, I was actually robbing the opportunity for my team to learn and grow as engineers. One of the best pieces of advice that someone gave me early on as a manager is that even though you can do a task, your time is better spent doing something that perhaps others cannot. So what I did was I made a list of everything on my plate and I divided up all the items that could be delegated. And these became opportunities for my team to step up. So this is an interesting one because although Jackie and I both struggled with delegation, we actually had to come at it from completely different angles because I thought that the only way to delegate something to someone was to know how to do it yourself. After all, what right do I have to tell you to do something if I don't know how to do it, right? The problem is, coming into a new team, I didn't know how to do anything, and that really puts a damper on trying to delegate something to someone. So again, I threw myself into learning as much as I could. I insisted on knowing the details to all of my team's projects so that I could get to know the code base as well as try to figure out if this project actually is on the right track or not. But there simply isn't enough hours in the day. And as Jackie said, your responsibilities change when you become a manager. I eventually learned to rely on resources and experts in our sibling teams and in our wider community to come in and step up where I couldn't. And I encouraged my team to do knowledge transfers whenever they learned something new so that the whole team could benefit. And in this way, delegate the responsibility of learning and teaching to the whole team. So, once you've figured out how to delegate, it's time to learn to manage up. And this is something that you've probably heard a lot, right? Managing up is so important. And when you become a manager, it's not just about yourself anymore, but it's about your team. And honestly, even this takes a second to get used to. Because as, as an IC, I was used to treasuring that time with my manager. I'd use it to advocate for myself, to talk about my tasks, to make sure that we're on the same page about my career growth. And the pitfall that I fell into was that I thought managing up as a manager would be the same thing. But it's actually quite different. Your responsibility as a manager is now to manage up your vision for the team. And that can look like talking about what technical direction you want the team to grow in or how to handle a tricky people leadership issue. But whatever the case is, the key to success for this is to gain your manager's trust in your decision making. And as a new manager, this is always going to be a hurdle. But complicating this bit for me even more was the fact that I didn't really know my manager and we didn't have a prior relationship. So something that I had to learn, and I'm still learning, is how to over-communicate with my manager. And this may depend on your own manager's style, but I found that doing this gives my manager more data points and lets them get to know me. And we can always talk about any feedback they have for me. But if I don't tell them what steps I plan to take in certain situations, they're not going to get that visibility into my thought process, and they're not going to buy into my vision. And from a different perspective, when I got promoted to being a manager, my manager also got promoted to becoming the department group manager. Because my manager was actually the previous manager for the team that now I was currently leading, I had to overcome the pitfall of leaning too much on my manager. And I had to set some boundaries to provide myself to the space to grow as a leader and to make my own mistakes. I found this interesting article from Professor Tina Sealing of Stanford University's Department of Science and Engineering. And she basically talks about this concept of a negotiation dance, which is basically about trying to find that balance between when to lead versus when to follow, when to stand by your own decisions versus when to make compromises. I was moving from a relationship with my manager where they were pretty much making all of the executive decisions to a relationship now where we'd have this back and forth and we'd collaboratively make decisions together. I need to establish my own vision for the technology, for the product, and most importantly, the people. Doing so meant I need to find that right balance between when to stand by my own opinions versus when to let my manager get involved. So this brings us to our fourth responsibility that as new managers, we often have to face pitfalls around, and that's how to give feedback effectively. For me, early on, I was very nervous about giving feedback because I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I found that typically in my conversations, I would kind of dance around the topic a little bit, and as a result, my message got diluted. 
However, I found that when I'm being clear and explicit about my purpose, it is much easier to be direct with the feedback without fear of the team misinterpreting its purpose. For example, what I might do is I might start a conversation by sharing my excitement about their potential and a certain capacity before asking if I can give feedback to help them continue to grow. I realize that intention matters and it impacts how messages are received. From my perspective, I was really hung up on the frequency of giving feedback. I thought I had to come to every one-on-one -on -one with my team with this perfect feedback that would help them grow and there was this magical ratio of positive to critical feedback. And if I didn't get that, I was fundamentally failing them. But I got some advice from a mentor who basically said, hey, you're someone who's come into your team's lives quite recently. You don't need to give feedback right away. So I took a step back and I decided just to talk to them for a bit. I got to know their motivations, their work pace, bits about their personality. And when it came time to give feedback, I was much more effective. I had the context of the situation and of the person with whom I was giving feedback to. Taking my time also made me more thoughtful. I practiced giving feedback alone and with mentors, and I generally found myself less reactive when coming into new situations or challenges. So regardless of what your pathway to leadership looks like, we really hope that our openness and vulnerability in, some of, in uh, talking about some of the pitfalls that we went into um, helps shift your mindset as you may face similar challenges in your own leadership journey. We hope you reach out to us during office hours. Thanks for speaking with us, um, and we'll see you later.